Are you about to ride your first ever cycling event? If so, here's seven things you probably want to avoid. Not taking food with you, because there's feed zones and support. Got any spare gels? And, uh, not for you. I've run out of food. I thought there was feed stations. Events tend to have feed stops, that's true. But there's generally not food at the start. The feeds might be quite spread out. And you don't know what type of food is going to be at the feeds. <laughs> or oh, your ear. Oh, oh, oh. oh, your earlobes are salty. I'm a salty boy. Remember to bring food with you even if there's feed stops. Because, one, you don't know how long the feed stop's going to take to get to. What if you have a mechanical and then you're left without food and you bonk like I just did? The other thing is the food at the feed stops might not be very good. Today, we are blessed with Garmin's fantastic choice of Haribo and bananas. But that's not always the case. What if you just get those horrible little waffle things? You never know what's going to happen. The people ahead of you might have eaten all the food and there's nothing there. Definitely take some food with you in your pockets. It's not going to weigh you down that much. And not only is it going to help in terms of fueling, but it gives you peace of mind. And you don't have to worry about the feeds or how long there is in between each one. You can relax, eat on your own schedule, little and often is what I'd recommend, and you'll have a much more enjoyable day. Not charging your Garmin. Yeah. You guys come on, just a bit I forgot to charge my Garmin. Yeah. Good job it's a solar one, so you, well, eventually it'll turn off. Have you charge yours? Yeah, yeah, mine's on. How much battery? 4%. It'll charge itself up, it's fine. We're good. It'll charge itself up? Yes. This is a mistake experienced and beginner cyclists make because the battery lasts really long time on some of these. So just make sure you charge it the night before along with your other stuff as well. Oh, bonus tip. Get one of these things for your house, like a multi USB smart charger. They're super cheap on Amazon. If you're charging lights, Garmin, headphones, phone, and whatever other stuff that's electronic these days, your bike, then having it all in one place makes a massive difference. Riding too hard, new roads and gravel tracks, and being surrounded by very excited event goers, it's easy for the pace to get out of hand, particularly at the start. Just hit them early, mate, just hit them early. If in doubt, hit out. You might be riding with new people and have no idea how strong they are. Why are we riding so hard, Chris? Because we're riding with a World Tour Pro. Oh, choose the people you ride with carefully. Don't get carried away and ride with people who are too strong. There are three preferred ways to pace yourself in cycling. First up, perceived effort. How hard you feel like you're going. Tip 14, bring a defibrillator. Granted, this is easier for more experienced riders. However, it is free. It's essentially listening to your body. How hard are you breathing? Do your muscles hurt? If you can hold a conversation, you can probably sustain that pace for quite a long time. If you're feeling that lactate build up in your legs, then it's not going to be sustainable for that long. Save it for the climbs on the event because you won't last long riding at that pace. Then you have heart rate. A big upgrade from perceived effort. A heart rate monitor will really show you how hard you're going. 210, is that high? Heart rate measured from a chest strap is more accurate than on a wrist. And you can get chest straps which link to your phone or head unit for around 30 pounds. Although they do run right up to premium versions at 120, 130 pounds as well. You can do tests to work out your heart rate zones or your training zones. And from that, you can figure out how long you can spend in each zone. Very useful for pacing an event. The downside to using heart rate is that it's affected by lots of things. The amount of sleep you have, how tired you are, fatigue, temperature, excitement, caffeine consumption. That means sometimes you need to take these readings with a pinch of salt. Always go easier rather than harder. Come on, Francis, let's race. <laughs> oh no. Power, the most expensive, but also the most accurate of the three. is measured using a power meter attached to your bike. We use Garmin Rallies, a pedal-based power meter. So they're really easy to fit and switch between bikes. These link to your head unit or other device and show you your power in watts. Again, you can do some power tests so you can find out how long you can sustain in each power zone, making it easy for you to pace your event. Unlike heart rate, it's not really affected by anything, so you can measure against other riders. I can do this many watts, Jimmy can do this many watts, and you can compare your data against each other if that's what you want to do. You can even compare yourself to professionals' power numbers and see how strong they are. This is kind of like using pacing in running. In cycling, you can't really go by average speed because there's too many other factors that affect it. I would use these tools to pace yourself carefully, especially when things go uphill, and you're going to have a much more enjoyable day. Trying something new on event day. You've spent money and time booking and getting to an event. Perhaps you've trained hard for a number of weeks to make sure things go smoothly. And then 
You turn up on event day with new shoes, which are uncomfortable, new energy gels, which make you feel sick, and a saddle that creaks. I'm speaking from experience there. Day ruined, all because you tried some new stuff. I would suggest only using tried and tested equipment that you've ridden before on event day. Even if you've had your bike specially serviced for the event, give it a test ride the day before, make sure everything's working, make sure there's no weird noises, just make sure you've tried everything before. Oh, and a bonus tip, if you have bought energy gels, make sure you read the packet because some of them have caffeine in and you don't want to only have caffeine ones in your pocket and then you'll be absolutely wired the whole day. So um, read your stuff. It's an easy mistake to make. Don't forget to eat and drink. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of an event when everyone's riding hard, there's loads of people to talk to, you're concentrating on holding wheels if you're not used to that, and it's very easy to forget to eat and drink. Before you know it, you've been riding for two hours and you haven't eaten or drank anything. You bonk, get dehydrated, and have a shit time for the rest of your ride. Eating and drinking will solve this. However, it's easier said than done with all these distractions. Simple solution, set up some alarms on your phone that you can hear every half an hour or so just to remind yourself to eat and drink. If you have a Garmin head unit, you can set up alerts. You just need to go to settings, activity profiles, choose the one you want it to be on. My one's set to indoor and outdoor, so I hit outdoor, alerts and prompts, eat alert, drink alert, set to on. You can then set it by time or distance or even a smart alert. Handy little feature that most people don't know you can do on a Garmin. I have these set up all the time for everyday riding because I always forget. Charge your DI2 or ETAP or Campag EPS the night before the ride. So many riders forget to charge it because particularly in the case of Shimano DI2, it lasts an outrageously long time. You can get two months of riding out of DI2 without charging your bike. Jack, Francis, why are you pedaling in such a big gear? Because my DI2 has run out of battery and this should definitely be a tip. <laughs> if you do run out of battery and you're doing the event, there are some things you can try. First up, if you're using SRAM ETAP, the wireless system, you can switch your batteries around. So if your rear mech's run out and your front mech is still fine, but you'd like access to your rear mech, you can switch the battery from the front mech to the rear mech. If you're running a dropper post for, if you're using a gravel dropper maybe, you can use the battery from the dropper post. It's all cross compatible and you can move them around wherever. You could even take a spare battery with you just as a precaution. If you're running Shimano Di2, it's not so easy as switching the batteries, but there is something you can do if you're stuck in a really hard gear and you wanna make a couple of shifts to get it in a more middle position on the cassette and get through the ride. You can dock your bike to somebody else's if they're running DI2. So unplug the plug from their rear mech, plug it into yours, do your shifts with their bike because that's what it's connected to, and then get yourself in an easier gear. Reverse it all back and you've stolen a bit of juice from your friend's bike. This only works if you're using the same version of a DI2 group set. So 11 speed will work with 11 speed. The new 12 speed stuff has a different connector. It might save you from riding in the 11 sprocket the whole way to the end of an event. Extra bonus tip here, you can also charge DI2 with a power bank. Connect that to your DI2 and run it in your pocket. It's not ideal, but I've seen people do this in races before. Worth mentioning. <laughs> It's a big organized event with mechanical support, so you don't need to bring spares, right? Wrong. You still need to bring spares. Chances are mechanical support means there's a mechanic at the start and finish line, and there might be a stop along the route somewhere with some stationary mechanics. If you have an issue in between these places, you need spares to get yourself rolling again. I would suggest at an absolute minimum, inner tube, tire levers, patch kit, pump, and an Allen key. Ideally a multi-tool, with a chain tool on it. There's nothing worse than being stuck at the side of the road, not being able to get going again, and having to rely on other people in the event. If you do bring spares, you could save someone else's day as well. Those are seven things that you want to avoid on event day. Let us know in the comment section down below if you've made any mistakes, and subscribe to this channel for more. Tip 15. Bucket hats. You can do anything with it.